slow start this morning, uploading the latest vlog episode. Don't tell anyone, it's two days late. <laughs> also vlog, and I'm just gonna try and not dox any of them. I'm doing some interviews for uh, the government's kickstart scheme. I'm also checking uh, their personality type using the 16 personality test. So the UK government give me 1500 pounds to take on a student or somebody who's recently graduated university to work at the company for six months. They also pay their wages for six months and they, I get them for three days a week, meaning that I can get some additional help on tasks. They can get some experience from me. And it's the first step into having an actual employee, so it's quite exciting. Graduate is going to be working on stuff in Coda to begin with, so building client dashboards and stuff like that. And as they start to get more familiar with the tools, I'll move them on to more interesting parts of the job. Now it's time for a work session. I'm going to be working on final parts of the workshop that I'm giving on Monday. So in this workshop, I'm gonna be teaching them about goal setting, and efficiencies. So I've done a load of research notes last week, now I just need to put it all together into a workshop. So the key part of this workshop vlog is that I'm using a document on the left with some research that I did before. It's always good to kind of plan these things out, whether you're designing a website or building out a workshop, to have done a planning session before so that you have a nice base to work off of. This gave me a good idea of what I needed to get done in that session. I also really like to use imagery to help illustrate certain points and I think that any presentation should use less words and more images to illustrate your point. So, four hours, or eight hours even, gets you a hundred slides of how we're gonna put together some efficiency stuff and how to do some deep work. And um, I'm actually thinking of putting this workshop on YouTube or doing it as a small paid course. I then talk about deep work, how people can do this and then how they can put it into their calendar so that it looks like mine, so that you have a very, very productive day. All in all, this will help you realize that you have limited time and then you're gonna start thinking, wow, how can we uh, get people to help us save more time and as well as that, and this is the most important one, move one, from one task to the other effort, effortlessly, getting more done without the distractions of your phone, social media, email, etc. It's just so efficient vlog. But yeah, that's, um, and this is the proof of how efficient it is. Four hours and I've done 116 slides and it's all ready to go. Just doing the shutdown session today vlog. And I had this one today. Have plans and checklists and processes in place so that if something does happen to go wrong, I always have a fallback, making it stress-free. Today we were let down by one of our developers, so I had to do the website launch, which I was a little bit gutted about, but because I'd written out like a massive process list for him, a massive instruction, I wasn't leaving anything to guesswork. It was all just really frictionless and I was just ticking stuff off and I did it in about 20, 30 minutes. Uh, in comparison, usually it takes an hour or two because I'm like guessing about all the different things that need to be done. So my tip for you would be that if you have a process, write it down and have a checklist that you can tick off at each stage that you hit in that process. So today I'm just clip cutting up some clips from a YouTube stream that we did on Saturday. It was 30 minutes of us just randomly talking, but now like I'm pulling out loads of clips that are gonna be really helpful for social media. There's some fun stories on here, we're all laughing, it's good energy, and there's some good books as well. Of course, I recommended A World Without Email, and of course, I recommended uh, Deep Work <laughs> as well. I think you guys are probably sick by now of hearing me talk about those two books, but they're the number one book that's gonna help you build productivity and uh, get to where you want to go. Hey vlog, just heading to Bobble Hat now. I'm giving them a, a bottle of champagne. Yeah. It's a small tradition at Imaginary Space that when a client project is finished, that we'll give them a bottle of champagne to celebrate and to say thank you for doing business with us. It costs 20 to 30 pounds, so 40 to 50 dollars to do this, but it's worth the uh, smile on their face. So yeah, just going into Bobble Hat now. So I've just set up a small presentation for the client just to go over everything that's going well so far when they can make some improvements. 
I'm uh, in Bobble Hat's meeting room at the moment, which has been turned into an art studio today. Just waiting for our client, uh, Evion, that we launched the website for. Already, I actually can't click on the leads because I'll dox them, but already through using Google Ads and sending them to the website, they've had like 20 to 40 leads, which is really exciting. Um, I would say the best thing that I did here and with some advice for all of you is if you don't have somebody to do the marketing or you don't know how to do the marketing yourself, get a company to help you do it because they'll take all the stress away of doing it. And uh, my client's just arrived, so I better go. Bye. Hey, Bilk, I'm off to Exeter now. It's Sunday. I'm staying in a hotel for the night and then the next morning I'm with the agency doing the workshop with them. Hey vlog, I made it. Two trains cancelled on me, which was not ideal, but um, we're here. I'm staying at um, a place called the Devon Hotel in Exeter in Devon. My clients um, are about an hour's train journey from me, so I decided that it'd be better to travel to them to give the workshop rather than to try and rush in the morning. I think I was looking at the numbers and I'd have to wake up at like half five in the morning or something, which is just crazy. So. Um, yep, staying the night here. I've got a bit of work to do, which I'm going to prep on my laptop and have a quick cup of tea, then find some dinner, then do a little bit more work, and then I'm going to call some friends and catch up with people for the evening. And then, yeah, go to sleep. Big day tomorrow. <laughs> See you all soon. Bye. Here I am working away. I have a friend outside. Hey buddy. So I did that classic thing vlog where I get really excited about a presentation I'm giving and then I don't actually record any time lapses or anything like that so you'll have to forgive me. However, as you can see in the picture here, we were in a really nice boardroom that was booked out by my client. I'd highly recommend booking out something to impress your potential client. And uh, we gave a really good presentation. It was really good uh, energy and everybody really got something out of it. So I couldn't have been happier with the result. Hey vlog, back from the Isle of Wight. Uh, today I'm kind of like getting back into the swing of things. Uh, I'll show you something that I used to help get into. It's, <laughs> it's a little bit depressing coming back because you're like still in holiday mode and then you're trying to figure out like, whoa, what am I meant to be doing? So um, Cal Newport always says it's great to have rituals for beginning stuff. And my ritual always for a deep work session is to make a coffee and then maybe do some 10 minute meditation. Dipping my toe back in, reading all my work gratitudes, reading my most recent review, looking at my calendar, reminding myself what got done before we uh, started this holiday. And then after that, did I have any emergencies? Was there anything uh, outstanding that didn't get done? And then check YouTube, see if you guys have said anything. Do I need to reply to any comments? I'm sure your restart list will look a little bit different as well. I'm now uh, past that. I read my review, just kind of set my targets for this week, which is to add all the suggestions to the landing page that friends and contacts have said to do. But first of all, this morning, I'm just figuring out uh, a project, I've got a call with my buddy Mosh in a minute, who developed, here he is. <laughs> Hi Mosh. Hey vlog. Oh, it's finally there, I think. Just had a copywriter edit all the text on here, added some more sections based on uh, some feedback from a, a guy that I know called, uh, well, shout him out, David Khan. Cheers, David, uh, who gave me some free tips. And I think this is pretty much done now. So guys, next steps. Next steps are gonna be running a paid marketing campaign, which I know a couple of you have been asking how to get more leads. Well, this is gonna be a good example of that. And also I'm gonna be doing some sales outreach. So sending messages on LinkedIn, connecting with people using the sales navigator. That's gonna be the next, I think, like focus for August doing loads of outreach and trying to get some sales. So very scary, very exciting times. I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to 
uh, work with more agencies now on not only the, their processes and stuff, but also their websites. So um, <laughs> it's nervous, nerve wracking, and it's exciting at the same time because it's the unknown, like, oh my God, what if it doesn't work? But I'm so used to making landing pages now and thinking in more like lead generating kind of methodology. I think that even if this niche that I'm going for, B2B agencies doesn't work, then I'm going to try like automotive or hospitals or dentists, you know, just keep trying different ones. I think I've got a good idea of how to generate really consistent leads now, like, you know, really scale the agency to where I want it to get to. What is up vlog? You probably remember the flow model that I did a while ago where I was talking about how I'm signing up a new client and automating that entire system. Well, I decided to revisit it and redo it just so that I can have it a bit more clearer. Having like software set up, processes and then databases as well. So I've now been looking at all the databases and I've also been setting up like template so I can start building these models in a cleaner way for the agency. I've been looking at this guy called Gregor Holf. He does like enterprise level business architecture videos on YouTube, trying to figure out what the fuck I'm gonna be doing. Um, <laughs> so it seems to me that there's two differences that I'm trying to model at the moment. There's the operational model, which is from uh, the customer's perspective, what happens when they put in an order some processes get fired off, some people get involved, some software gets done, uh, written, some data is moved around and a product is created. And then from an executive top down level, you're looking at how all of these things fit into a certain service providing. So at the moment, I'm just working on operational models. The reason I'm doing this vlog is because it's much easier to do, do it like this and then build the thing based off a plan now I know like what software I'm using it at each stage. I know the processes. I know the decision models that I have to build, all the other little processes as well, and the databases that get added. It looks a lot cleaner like this now that I've revisited it. And I want to make a new client flow model, and I also need to make a new change request model. So now I'm just uh, looking at our CRM database that I need to build for my upcoming sales campaign. Before I had uh, just a meetings tab. I'll show you pretty. So yeah, you've all seen it before, but I have this uh, meetings data tab thing. I'm gonna have to blur some of this out, I think. But I have this contacts sheet. Now I'll blur this bit out, but uh, at the moment I just have contacts, but I don't have like a CRM system that like has all of the meetings that I had with them in it and then has like documents linking to them. So I need to just create a bit more of a CRM now rather than just purely for meetings. Morning vlog. I'm um, seeing a really interesting trend. You remember that request form that I showed you? Um, well, on it, it has the two options, send me a quote or bill me after. A lot of people are choosing bill me after. And this is actually reducing a lot of my time because I'm not having to quote for stuff anymore. And instead, no, it's like really quick. Like I'm kind of blown away really, because it's better for me. I'm not having to write proposals. We just do the work and then we build them after. But I think people prefer speed over quotes sometimes because they know that, that can take long. I would totally experiment this with your own clients for changes and stuff, because this is more profitable for us because we're not having to write quotes. And as well as that, it takes a lot of the stress out of having to propose stuff and propose quotes and stuff. Instead, it just gets done. It's a bit like a software product. I was feeling a bit frustrated yesterday vlog and I realized that um, actually that frustration came from not having a good visibility on projects. Um, as we scale now and I'm taking on more and more work, it's getting more and more, into, um, it's getting harder and harder to really know where projects are at, what I should be looking at, what we're not working on, what we are working on and uh, who, sh who should be delegated work as well, where stuff is at. So um, in that case, I have now decided that this morning I'm dedicating my deep work session to planning out a new version of the task manager. As you remember, um, I built a task manager ages ago. And if I go into uh, my company's tasks, for example, they're split out project by project like this. And we've even gone as far now to actually 
use a card system to move stuff along as you go, sort of similar to Trello. I've realized that actually, I realized that this could be more efficient and better, especially the way that we look at projects as a whole. So I'm just trying to figure out now, like what is the best system that's gonna allow me to be able to have full visibility on projects and know what the hell is going on each time that I log in and uh, be able to efficiently project manage as well. What do you guys use to project manage uh, your tasks and stuff like that? Is it Trello, is it ClickUp, is it Coda? Uh, let me know in the comments, I'd be interested to hear. So just uh, spending a deep work session on this. As I mentioned, doing research prior to building something just really helps and I found loads of cool stuff on the internet here. So that's the end of uh, this week's vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm back to sort of semi-regular scheduling now, considering I'm back from holiday. As I said, let me know a book that you would recommend in the comments. Would be really, really interested in hearing about what you guys are reading at the moment. I'm starting to run out. <laughs> so let me know if there is anything cool. And I uh, hope you have a productive week. See you all soon, bye.